Assalamu ala Rasulillah amma ba'd. The personality that we look at this evening is none other than the cousin of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Three years before the Hijrah, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas was born. When he was born, his mother took him to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and asked Nabi sallallahu to make the tahniq to put a sweet thing in the mouth of the baby after chewing on it. And Nabi sallallahu did that. And Nabi sallallahu made the dua, Allahumma aati al-hikmah, Allah grant him hikmah. Nabi sallallahu married Umm al-Mu'mineen Maymuna radiallahu ta'ala anha, who was the sister of Sayyidina Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And because of that, as a young boy, Accepting the deen of Islam, he had access to the home of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in Madinatul Munawwara, one day, at the time of Tahajjud, when Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam woke up, he found that his water was prepared for his istinja and his wudu. And then he asked as to who had prepared it. And Sayyida Maimuna said, it was Abdullah. Then... Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then told him to make dua and salah with Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he stood behind Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told him, stand alongside me. And he said, oh Nabi Allah, you're so great. How can I stand alongside you? After these services that he rendered to Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the eagerness that he showed, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made dua once again for him. Allahumma aati al-hikmah, Allah grant him hikmah. And in the verse of the Noble Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Whoever has been granted hikmah has been granted abundance of good by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says that Nabi Sallallahu made dua for me twice and Nabi Sallallahu saw Jibreel in his natural form twice. He continued to live alongside Nabi Sallallahu remaining so close to Nabi Sallallahu almost like his shadow. Focusing entirely on gaining the knowledge of deen. And when Nabi Sallallahu passed away, he was just 13 years old at that time. He was amongst the youngsters at that time. Despite that, he already had a great rank amongst the Sahaba. He focused entirely on the knowledge of deen. And he would search for individuals who he could gain the knowledge from deen. And he said that, if he knew that there was a particular Sahabi who knew a hadith or an explanation of a verse, he would go to the Sahabi's house, he would lay down his shawl, he would sit on the shawl, and the wind of the desert would be blowing, the sand would come on him, he would remain there, till the Sahabi himself would come out of his house. When he would come out of the house, he would see Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas there, he would say, Oh, cousin of Nabi of Allah, how can you sit here and wait for me? You should have told me. I would have come to you to inform you whatever you wanted to know. And he then would explain and say that I want to gain the knowledge of deen. That's why I have to show the eagerness and I have to come to you. If we want to gain the knowledge of deen, we will have to come out of our comfort zone. We will have to make sacrifice. And that is what Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas had showed us. That he went to the ulama the scholars, and he learned the knowledge of deen. One day, Sayyidina Zaid bin Thabit radiallahu anhu was on his mount, and he was Katibul Wahi, the one of the scribes of Wahi. And Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas had asked him certain questions, and then while he was leaving on his mount, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas was holding the camel's reins, showing utmost respect to this great Sahabi. And the Sahabi says that, Oh, cousin of Nabi of Allah, you make us feel shy. That why are you doing that? So he responds by saying, This is how we show respect to our scholars of deen. So Sayyidina Zaid bin Thabit dismounts his camel. He comes to him. He kisses his hand and he says, This is how we've been instructed to honor the household of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So this mutual relationship of respect was found from both sides. 
It wasn't that the one side was looking for respect. In the era that we live, everybody's demanding respect. That I feel people are not understanding who my worth is. They don't respect me as I ought to be respected. Others feel that I'm not getting my rights. And everyone's tussling for their rights. Everyone feels that their rights are being abused or violated. Yet the Sahaba was such that they were looking to lift the other person and to honor the other person. Allah had granted this great Sahabi so much knowledge that on one occasion, one Sahabi commented and he said that if the Quraysh want to boast, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas's gathering is sufficient for them. What was his gathering? You have universities, but his home had become a university. In a university, in a madrasa, you have 10 teachers, 20 teachers, 100 teachers. Here there was a single teacher. Yet the roads leading to his home was filled with people. The alleys, the walkways, the sideways were all filled. Uh, to such an extent that people could not come in at one time. So they had to make an announcement. All those who want to know about the huruf, the letters of the Quran, come in and ask your questions. They would come in, uh, he would give them an opportunity to ask whatever they wanted. He would then respond to all those questions and he would say, now you leave. The announcement would be made, all those who want to know about the commentary of the Quran, the tafsir, come inside. And all those would come inside and then they would leave. Then there would be announcement, all those who want to know about the Arabic language, the intricacies and the eloquence and the literature of the Arabic language come in and those who were interested in that subject would come in, then they would leave. Then the announcement would be made, all those who want to know about poetry and they would come in. Eventually, uh, there were so many students till uh, he finally decided that one day was for fiqh, that he would deliver durus, uh, lessons on fiqh, one day on tafsir, one day on hadith, one day on poetry, one day on language, and like that he stipulated each day of the week for a particular subject. During the time of Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Umar kept him very close. And they were obviously seniors, and when a youngster is being kept in the ranks of the seniors, the seniors feel uneasy, they feel intimidated. So someone objected and said, Oh, oh Amir al Mu'mineen, yeah, there is Ahl Badr. These people who participated in the Battle of Badr. And this youngster, I mean, he was just six years old at that time. What he knows about Badr? What he knows about all the great events of the Deen of Islam? So, why is he sitting with everyone senior here? So Sayyidina Umar put a question and he said that إِذَا جَاءَ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ وَالْفَتْحِ وَرَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجًا فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ تَوَّابًا He asked the Badriyin, what do you understand about this surah? So they said that when the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes and people enter into the deen in droves, then you should فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ Make the tasbih of Allah and ask His forgiveness. Allah had granted you so much, now thank Him and ask for forgiveness. That is what the surah is all about. That's the literal meaning of it. And then Sayyidina Umar turned to Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas and said, What do you say? And he says, In this surah, there's a subtle hint to the Messenger وسلم, that his mission has been completed and it is now time for him to departure from this world to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when Sayyidina Umar heard that answer, he started smiling and he turned to them and he said, Do you understand why I keep this man so close? Because of his great knowledge, the dua that Nabi Sallallahu had granted him. During the time of Amir Muawiyah, he had an entourage of servants and government individuals who would accompany him for his Hajj journey. These were all paid individuals. They would go with him for Hajj. And Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas also went for Hajj at the same time. But his entourage was a different one. It was scholars, it was students. And he said that there was such a huge amount of people around him in every time that it overshadowed the entourage of even the Amirul Mu'mineen at that time. He was very, very dedicated to the knowledge of Deen. And he lived his life for knowledge. These books of tafsir that have been compiled solely on the opinions of Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas. 
when he passed away, Muhammad al Hanafiya had buried him. And it said that at the last moments of his life, when they were about to bury him, there was a white bird that came from the sky. And it sort of entered into his body. And as they put the sand over his body, there was an announcement that was made. Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. Irji'i ila rabbiki radiyatan maradiyya. Fadkhuli fi ibadi. Wadkhuli jannati. Oh, that soul at peace. Go forth to Allah in such a condition that Allah is pleased with you and you are pleased with Allah. And they looked to see where's the noise coming from. And the noise was from the unseen. This is the great son of the deen of Islam who we are deeply indebted in every aspect of our lives. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala elevate his position.